Hi, my name is Kevin Berkler, and I'm here to teach you all about one of the main focuses of supply chain management, which is efficiency. So, namely, today we're going to discuss overall equipment effectiveness, which is one of the main measures to determine our cumulative net efficiency of our total processes. So, we see here are some plant managers. These plant managers look all happy, right? They're all very confident in each one of their individual machines and their uh, perception on how it uh, creates their finished goods. However, what this measure will show us is that the cumulative net effect of each machine and their deficiencies will actually produce a very um, unanticipated effect on the finished product. So, what is overall equipment effectiveness? The Chaco definition is going to be this. It is the measure of a machine's ability to run as planned, produce as per rated capacity, and produce quality products through each machine on a cumulative effect. So how do we calculate this? It will be through three ratios, the availability ratio, the performance ratio, and the quality ratio. Now multiplying these together will create our overall equipment effectiveness, which is most of the time much um, less significant than each individual ratio that we calculate first. So now we're in the teacher's view, where I'm going to show you how to calculate overall equipment effectiveness by hand. So our example is going to include Piscali Steel Factory. Over the last 12 months of production, um, these numbers have been averaged. Have been averaged. Um, so for this month, it was forecasted that Piscali Steel Factory could produce 100 tons of capacity uh, running at 500 hours of scheduled time. However, after the month was over, these results were found. 10 hours of that 500 hour scheduled time was lost due to machine downtime, perhaps due to repairs or other errors. Of the 100 tons that we were forecasted to produce, only 90 tons of those were produced. And of those 90 tons, five of those tons were rejected because they were of poor quality. As we noted on the board, our overall equipment effectiveness ratio is going to calculate the availability ratio multiplied by the performance ratio multiplied by the quality ratio. So first, the availability ratio is our uptime, which is the actual time that our machines ran for during the month, divided by our scheduled time. As we know, we were scheduled for 500 hours, but our machines only ran for 490. This equates to a 98% availability ratio. As we show, showed on the board, that plant manager is, couldn't be happier with those results. Next, we're going to talk about the performance ratio. The, the performance ratio is going to be the, the forecasted capacity of what we thought we could produce um, underneath, divided, uh, div divided by the um, actual. So as we said, the capacity that we could have produced that was at was 100, but we only produced 90 tons. Thus, our ratio is 90%. Again, a very good ratio in terms of individual performance. Lastly, we're going to talk about our quality ratio. This is going to be the number, um, the number of quality products that we produced, or tons that we produced, divided by the total uh, tons that we produced. We produced 90, and five of those were rejected, which is 85. Again, this produces a very favorable ratio at 94%. We're going to multiply these out, these three very good ratios. However, what we see through the overall equipment effectiveness is a cumulative net effect that produces those startling numbers. This equates to only an 83% um, overall equipment effectiveness. And this shows that even though you may be content with individual numbers, the overall system production is oftentimes much more vulnerable than he thought. So this has been Kevin Verkler teaching um, foundations of supply chain management, and I hope you all had a great day. Thank you.